Bringing our session to a close, we are pleased to welcome our final featured speaker of the evening, Jessa Orluck. Ms. Orluck is the Reproductive and Environmental Justice Alumni Fellow for the Population and Development POPDEV program at Hampshire College, which is a center for thinking, learning, and advocacy on population and the environment. POPDEV champions social justice, including reproductive and sexual freedom, environmental and climate justice, peace, and immigration rights. A recent graduate of Hampshire College, Ms. Orlick concentrated in political ecology, taking classes in environmental justice, economic and political theory, geography, and climate policy. Outside of class, she found a passion in community work, first through organizing a social entrepreneurship conference, M is for Mobilize, in the spring of 2012, and then with the Transition Hampshire Group. Her most recent organizing work was with the Sadie Nash Leadership Project in New York City where she was awarded an Ella Fellowship to organize an environmental justice lunch series, Trash Talk, during the 2013-2014 school year. Please welcome Jessa Orlick. Thank you. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to speak today and to re-engage with my own and with our collective feminism in the company of such amazing women, past and present. When I first started thinking about what I was going to say today, I remember thinking how great it would be if I could stand up here and tell you that the struggles detailed in the historic speeches we just heard were just that, history. Of course, while the women who have made giant leaps forward in advancing environmental and gender justice should still inspire us, challenges still remain. Too often, women's fertility and women's bodies are blamed for today's environmental problems, even climate change, in ways that restrict reproductive rights, harm our planet, and ultimately keep us from innovating real solutions. What does this look like? Well, one of the more lighthearted manifestations are the endangered species condoms provided by the Center for Biological Diversity at Purdue University. The packages come with not one, but two condoms, covered with comic book-like illustrations of different endangered species. They're plastered with phrases like, wrap with care, save the polar bear, and in the sack, save the leatherback, or my personal favorite, be a savvy lover, save the snowy plover. <laughs> Inside the wrapper, fun facts about unsustainable human population growth, links to the extinction crises, and suggestions on how to stabilize the human population are available for some light reading. This is all inside the condom wrapper. The program says endangered species condoms offer a fun, unique way to get people talking about the link between human population growth and the species extinction crisis. Sexy, right? But will having less people really stop our destructive path? Carbon emissions, waste, deforestation, and extractive industries are all driven by an economic system that demands constant consumption. Even if the United States, the country that consumes the most of any country in the world, were to keep our population the way it is right now for the next however many years, we would still theoretically be able to consume as much as if our population had doubled. It's called progress. Those endangered species could still become extinct. We could still have poverty. We could still have harrowing amounts of food insecurity and hunger. Because the issue is not that we don't have enough. The issue is that we distribute what we do have unequally. By focusing our efforts on slowing population growth instead of finding ways to fix this inequality, we let the true culprits of injustice keep pushing their agenda forward. The U.S. military is, per capita, the biggest polluting force in the world. Almost 900 of the 1,300 EPA Superfund sites are abandoned military bases or military manufacturing or testing sites. Corporations, the ones who profit from our, from our uh, consumerism, are also to blame. Right now, the Obama administration is seeking to fast track the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, free trade agreements that have been negotiated in secret and have been called, quote, NAFTA on steroids. From the leaked documents, 
we know that both agreements will destroy any environmental protections through harmonizing regulations or bringing them down to the lowest common denominator. We know that both agreements have dispute resolution mechanisms that allow foreign corporations to sue nations and private tribunals for creating barriers to trade, or as we know them, environmental protections that we have to have to create a truly healthy planet. This is a crucial time for the environmental movement. We can no longer be distracted by false solutions, by simple solutions. We need cross-movement work. Environmentalists must support access to comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care simply because it's a woman's right to have proper health care, not because of this false idea that women hold the fate of the planet in their wombs. And reproductive justice activists and the environmental movement really needs our help. We have to ensure that the biggest polluters on the earth are held accountable for destroying our communities. Our future may depend on it. Thank you.